How's it going everyone? Want to go over a couple PS4 and PS5 game updates as well as some comments from uh, Microsoft boss Phil Spencer regarding PlayStation's potential subscription service. He had some interesting things to say. We'll get to that in a little bit, but we got information on Hogwarts Legacy. Shadow Warrior 3 has gotten a release date with an awesome pre-order bonus and My Hero Academia. Ultra Rumble. It has gotten a debut gameplay trailer. We have some screenshots for the game as well. We'll talk that in a little bit. We've been talking a lot about uh, PlayStation's potential subscription service. It's something that I am very excited for, and it looks like Phil Spencer uh, saw this one coming, and uh, this is coming from uh, IGN. Xbox boss Phil Spencer talked about it, and he noted, quote, I don't mean it to sound like we've got it all figured out, but I think the right answer is allowing your customers to play the games they want to play, where they want to play them, and giving them the choice about how they build their library, and being transparent with them about what our plans are in terms of our PC initiatives and our cross-gen initiatives and other things so when i hear others doing things like game pass or coming to pc it makes sense to me because i think that's the right answer i don't really look at it as validation i actually when i'm talking to our teams i talk about it as an inevitability so for us we should continue to innovate continue to compete because the things that we're doing might be advantages that we have in the market today but they're just based on us going first not that we've created something that no one else can create and he also did note, because I think the right answer is to ship great games, ship them to PC, ship them to console, ship them on cloud, make them available day one in the subscription, and I expect that's what our competitor will do as well. So he's expecting day one releases on uh, Spartacus, whatever they name the subscription service, and that's always something people are going to go back and forth on, you know? I want games to be day one on a subscription service. Look, I remember the days growing up, and... You had to be very selective on what games you played because nobody could drop $60 on every game. And these days, if we can get into a world where, you know, you can pay $10 a month for a subscription service and have access to all of these great games, like, think about these kids that are growing up with Game Pass being available, like, from a value standpoint. It is incredible how many games they're getting for that price point. Like, I would, I would have been an absolute fiend back in the day if I had access to Xbox Game Pass, I'd be playing so many games on there, and it's just such a great value, uh, you know, for some people that these, uh, you know, that are in their mid to late 20s, they've got their careers and everything like that, maybe it's not as big of a deal to them because they have, you know, disposable income and whatever the case may be, but a lot of people don't, and a lot of people want to find best values, and, you know, we do deals videos all the time, but those deals videos would pretty much be irrelevant if we had a high quality subscription service and hey we might have to figure out what we're going to do with this channel if deals videos uh, aren't being able to be made but hey that's a bridge we'll cross in the future and some people are always going to be against the subscription service and you know microsoft is still doing their deals and it's not like every game comes to xbox game pass day one or anything like that but um you know, Game Pass does have a solid first-party lineup of games that are seemingly coming in 2023 and 2022, of course. Um, pushing the cart before the horse, talking about 2023. But you're talking about Halo just got added. You're talking about Forza Horizon 5. Uh, you know, I still wouldn't say Microsoft has the first party at the level of Sony, but... Man, if you think Microsoft's not catching up to Sony from a first-party standpoint, I don't know where you're living, I don't know what you're thinking, because I look at Forza, I look at how great Halo Infinite is, and then I look at 2022 and 2023, if Fable turns out well, if Starfield is a banger, I mean, those are high-quality games that are coming day one to Xbox Game Pass, where... Sure, God of War is going to be great, but you're talking $70. Horizon's going to be great, but you're talking $70. Just those two games alone, you're talking about covering an entire year of Xbox Game Pass. That's insane to me from a value standpoint, and ultimately, I don't know how sustainable of a business model that's going to be when you look at the other side, and at some point, and I've been saying this for a while, and Microsoft continues to not get to that level where their first party is there, but at some point, their first party is going to be there. Their first party is going to be at the level or close to the level of Sony, and some people might say, hey, Forza and Halo outpaces Sony's offerings in 2021. Probably wouldn't agree with that, but uh, an argument to be made for sure, like, what was 2021? Returnal, Ratchet & Clank, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, like, it wasn't that great of a year. And Microsoft is gaining on the first party standpoint and with their subscription service being an incredible value. It's something to consider for sure. And I always see comments being like, yo, a subscription service isn't the move. A subscription service wouldn't be good. I wouldn't subscribe to it, but I think a lot of people would. 
And I think it would just create a lot of value uh, for the consumer, which at the end of the day is the most important thing. You want to get the ability to play great games at a great price. Harry Potter game Hogwarts Legacy might be in trouble and might not be a 2022 title. Sacred Symbols host Colin Moriarty revealed that on his latest PlayStation podcast that the game isn't coming out this year and it's in some sort of trouble. I believe... This is something that a lot of people saw coming, like this is a game I just think is going to be one that sees a couple delays and it's already seen a delay out of its initial 2021 release window, right? It was originally supposed to be a 2021 game and I don't know, sometimes I just get this gut feeling about games where I'm just like, yeah, I don't know how this is going to turn out from a development standpoint and Hogwarts Legacy is one that I felt like it was gonna have some turmoil attached to it. I know that's like very pessimistic to think about and maybe that's not the right way to approach things. Uh, you know, optimism probably uh, causes for a healthier mind state, but when it comes to video games, you know, delays are gonna happen and uh, it happens more so more often than not these days and with Hogwarts Legacy, we'll see how things turn out. With a game like this, you definitely need to take your time and make sure everything is ironed out. But when you're talking about a game that was initially supposed to come out in 2021, potentially being pushed until 2023, that is a gargantuan of a delay and that is always going to be a cause for concern. And whenever a game is delayed multiple times, that is always an immediate red flag being like, whoa, what is going on here? Because that's exactly what happened to me with Cyberpunk 2077, and I was stunned that the anticipation and the hype was at the level for that game. After it got delayed three times, uh, I just had it in the back of my mind, like, yo, when a game gets delayed three times like that, or four times, or whatever many times it was, uh, that is always going to be a bit of a cause for concern. You're always going to have that Miyamoto thing being thrown around, like, would you rather a game come out on release date or a game uh, being delayed and, you know, being fixed, whatever. Yeah, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. It goes on around social media all the time. However, um... When a game gets delayed multiple times, that's a cause con for, uh, for concern with the development cycle of the game, and at that point, uh, does it get to a point where the game just has to come out at some point and you can't delay it any further? Look, it's still very early, this is still just a rumor, uh, but Colin Moriarty is on the money about pretty much everything, like, he's well connected in the industry, so we'll see how things turn out with Hogwarts Legacy, but... Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, more positive news. Shadow Warrior 3 is dropping on March the 1st. The pre-order bundle also includes the first two games in the series. Now, this is going to be priced at $49.99, and it's going to include instant access to Shadow Warrior 1 and 2. Now, these games, you can get the bundle for like 10 bucks when it's on sale, so it's not like that's a huge incentive to pre-order the game, but that's definitely a nice incentive if you were going to, you know, pick up Shadow Warrior 3, you're going to get the other two games with it, but, you know... Asking to pay $50 for Shadow Warrior 3 might be a big ask if you haven't played Shadow Warrior 1 and 2. If you played Shadow Warrior 1 and 2, then yeah, you're going to be super excited for the game because Shadow Warrior 1 and 2 were awesome. And you're probably all on board to drop $50 on the game. So kind of something to consider there. The game uh, pre-order will also include a limited edition katana skin for Shadow Warrior 3. So that's something to note as well. The game's key features now bring a katana to a gunfight, fancy footwork, execute, then annihilate dynamic combat arenas, neo-feudal Japan, and funny business brace for expertly delivered one-liners from Lo Wang, pointed banter with Zilla, and an intense thrill ride of absurd predicaments on the way to turning Doomsday into a new new day. Expect something that's gory, a bit stylish, a bit bloody. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, though. Flying Wild Hog has done a good job with the other two titles in the series, and I imagine that if, you know, you can look at Shadow Warrior 1 and 2, Shadow Warrior 3 is probably going to be something that is going to be enjoyable. Maybe $50 is a bit expensive for some people, but I think Shadow Warrior 1 and 2 dropped at $40, so that's not like that much of a price bump. And uh, yeah, we're probably going to get a pretty solid game with that as well. Next up, My Hero Academia Ultra Rumble has gotten its debut gameplay and trailer. There is going to be a closed beta test. However, it's exclusive uh, in Japan. It's going to be running from February 2nd to the 6th. The closed beta test will feature 12 playable characters in Deku, Katsuki Bakugo, uh, Uraraka, Todoroki... And a couple other characters, those are the name, uh, nameable characters, All Might's in there as well, Tomora, uh, Dobby's in there, so yeah, some pretty notable characters are gonna be in the beta, but the game itself is going to be 24 players, so obviously a smaller scale battle royale, but uh, I definitely prefer that over, you know, like a 100 player battle royale, we've seen that and I just don't know how that would work in a My Hero Ac uh, Academy experience, so 
you know, I'm a fan of the anime. It is a free-to-play Battle Royale title, so people are always going to be a bit apprehensive as far as that's concerned, but we'll see how this one turns out. And probably will be dropping uh, with its full release sometime in 2022. But that's going to do it for me. Again, unfortunately, it looks like Hogwarts Legacy might be in some trouble. Might be seeing a delay until 2023. Shadow Warrior 3, however, dropping soon on March 1st. My Hero Academy Ultimate Rumble has gotten a trailer. Ultra Rumble, I should say. Uh, that'll be coming hopefully sometime in 2022. And, you know... PlayStation and Xbox, their subscription services and where they line up is going to be super interesting. I do find it hard to believe that Sony is going to forego day one um, releases of their games and charging $70 to just put it all on Spartacus. I just think that's a tall, tall of an ass. And I saw some comments of people being like, yo, Returnal is not going to be a PlayStation Plus game. That's too much to ask for. And then <laughs> if you're talking about a subscription service with all the day one games, just a lot to consider. Uh, so yeah, sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.